Hey guys, Adam from Equip to Endure. So part two on our BioLite stove. Today we want to test the capacity of it to use as a charging device for our cell phones, electrical devices and stuff like that. So I'll be charging my uh, iPhone right now. I'm at 34%. I'm going to plug it up, see how long it takes to charge. Give you guys some other information in reference to what I think about this thus far. And we talked about this in a previous video on the podcast and such. So again, interesting item. I don't know if it does anything perfect of what it's designed to do. It wasn't bad for cooking with medium heat. That wasn't very consistent, but if you needed consistent heat, uh, that's one thing that I found to be kind of troublesome with getting this to temperature. So we're going to start up right now, guys. Just stay tuned. We'll be charging our phones and I'll kind of just leave the camera rolling as we uh, knock this out. So stand by. <laughs> Nobody didn't send any eyebrows. <laughs> Jeezy peasy. Yeah, let's keep some top burning of that. Now there's plenty of smoke, so maybe I'll just let that do its own thing for right now. It just seems kind of uh, ridiculous to me. All right, you guys can see the, the gasification. I'm gonna switch angles for you guys real quick. So just bear with me, so I, you guys, I want you guys to see the flame. All right, that looks like it's, uh, it's finally going. So we're gonna go ahead and plug our device in. The USB. And uh, right now we're at uh, 33%. So let's see what we can do. All right, so right now, it's not even registering the device as charging. Now, I wonder if that's because the fan is on high. Let's put the fan on low. Nothing. So you guys see So this fan did cut off, so maybe this needs to charge by itself first. So let's just uh, keep on uh, throwing materials in there. We definitely have some gasification happening right now. I mean, the jets, you can see uh, the wood gas coming out of the jets and catching on fire. I'm gonna just baton some more of this hardwood and into probably thumb-sized pieces, kind of similar to what we have on the fire right now and uh, see how it does. Very, very interesting. So I'm moving my phone down away from the heat source. All right, so sounds like the fan changed. Um, I don't know what that's from. On our last burn, I burnt this for probably 90 minutes straight and had almost no ash. I mean, so it's, it's really breaking down the amount of ash. And as you guys can see, there's really no smoke. Uh, so that is one very positive thing, and which was a goal of this design, is to minimize smoke. Uh, so this can be used in, you know, 
I wouldn't say closed spaces, but less than wide open spaces, you know, shelters and stuff like that. Um, of, of course, again, this was originally designed as a, as a solution for, for uh, some third world needs where people were cooking on wood fires in their homes and the hazards associated with that. So, so you guys can see the, the vortex and the height of the flame. See it spinning there. I still got nothing coming on. So let me turn this off and see. That's high. Now, as soon as we turn that off, you can see the difference in the fire. But I'm still not getting anything. Um, turn it off, turn it on automatically. All right, finally, now we're getting a charge. Just, it just turned on. We see the green light down here now, I guess, indicating the charge. Um, but now I don't think it's charging anymore. Let me see. Okay, here we are, starting to charge. So 33% and is now 1708. Throw in some more fuel wood. I know what happened to the fire now. Let me throw some thinner stuff on there. Let me break this down. Okay. So now it's not charging again. So that was one minute's worth of charging for that wood. Um, I guess the fire has... All right, so we have, if you guys can see, we got the orange light and the green light over here. But also there's a orange light underneath here, which turns green when uh, we get the temperature. I mean, you can see the vortex in that fan, but I, I, I kind of feel like the fan is burning up too much energy. turn it off again and see if that uh, helps the charging take place. This turns the fans back on low. All right, just went on again. So that was at 512 or 1712. Right, move this back down here for a second. Why? 
process this next piece. Just in case you guys were wondering, this is a uh, Genesis from LT Wright Knives. Just got this in uh, yesterday, and I'm loving it. Beautiful, one eighth inch A2 steel. Great ergonomics. We'll have a separate video on this. Just wanted to. I always get that question. Hey man, what knife are you using? So that's what we're using for today's uh, test of the BioLite. I wasn't gone for long. Still got a green light, so we're happy with that. Looks like we get the, oh, just lost it. So that lasts three minutes, uh, but we did get up to 36%. So that's not bad. And also should be noted this device is still on as it's being charged. Which probably people are going to tell me, Adam, you're going to ruin your battery doing stuff like that. What I do for you guys? Still not back to charging. We're now at 35%. So now there is a piece. There is a piece that builds a stove on top of this, which probably works a lot better than cooking on this because you have more room for taller fuel wood, so you can probably pack more stuff in there. Um, than like th than this formation or this setup. You guys see how fast we're burning this stuff down. Just moving it so you guys can see the vortex. And that's pretty cool. I mean, it's definitely it's definitely cooking. All right, it's back to the charge at a uh, 18 minute mark. See the green light again. So I wonder if leaving that element more exposed to the flame, let me try uh, stacking full fuel wood behind that element. It's definitely hot. Give you guys a visual of how hot that is. Super hot. All right, back to 36%. Now my phone usually stays on a little bit longer than that when it's charging. So that's interesting. I wonder if that's a power saving function. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> Woo. I guess that uh, that case is also a little fire retardant. Nice. I knew that was going to happen. So that presents a challenge to to get it to burn long enough. You put need to put some taller fuel wood in there. All right. So we just lost it. So that was four minutes and about two percent. So we're getting inconsistent charges. I don't know if that's from the phone recognizing the value of the charge or what we have here, but. As you guys can see, we were pretty consistent with that burn. All right, so I think I'm gonna call that. I think I've seen enough. Um, we're gonna let this portion burn out and I'll be right back with you guys. I wanna see one more thing. If we get another green indicator light here, that means uh, it can charge. Probably not on the setting. You guys can see uh, that vortex kicking around. All right, so we did get a green indicator light down here. So we do have a charge there. So very interesting. All right, guys, so are we gonna get exactly everything that we need out of the uh, BioLite? I could say no, and I'm pretty confident with that. Even though it's a very cool piece of technology that's going in the right direction, I just don't think that this size, this weight, and the compact nature is gonna do any value to you. I'd rather go, if I wanted a solution like this, actually something larger. And it is, it, that does sound odd. I just think that there's more utility in something, something that can produce a bigger fire, make more heat, and have a larger capacity for charging a device. So let's talk about what options we have. So with something like this, and we're gonna go ahead and turn it back on low. 
just so it finishes that burn. All right, we have two and a half pounds or 2.35 pounds, whatever it is. So let's look at stove options. Well, it so happens that I have a stove in my pocket that weighs 2.85 ounces. So this is gonna produce a hot enough flame. This is the fire ant. You guys have seen us doing uh, videos for this before. Now I will put, I would put in there, you know, some, uh, some disclosure. Mikhail and uh, the guys over at their Emberlit are friends of ours, um, but they're friends through, uh, through business developments of, uh, you know, coming to E2E events and uh, hanging out with those guys at shows and really loving their products. You guys know that we've been using the uh, Emberlits and the fire ants here for a while. This is a prototype fire ant. As you can see, it's nice and blue because I've been testing the crap out of it. And I really haven't found any issues with it. I mean, yeah, it takes a little, a little bit of assembly as you guys can see. Uh, but once you're on there, this is titanium. You're ready to rock and roll. Feeding port, so you can slide fuel wood in there as you need it. And it does, you know, take the weight of something cast iron. Uh, and I can have larger fuel wood that I can slowly push in the chamber as need be. So I think that makes more sense to fit your needs as a compact stove. Now, if I need a power source, you know, there's all kind of great battery technology now. This right here is uh, my power rock, and this will charge my iPhone four times from zero. And you can see how big this thing is. Now, there's several solutions out there for solar power if you want to power this out in the field. But, you know, I don't really need any other device that I carry with me, something that's small that's going to need more than four charges. If, if I am in that situation, then I have something like my Sherpa, uh, my Sherpa 50 from uh, Goal Zero. There's Goal Zero uh, solar panels that actually would pack up a lot lighter and a lot less volume than this. You know, the Fire Ant, I know the price isn't out for it yet. I know the titanium emblem is about 80 bucks. The stainless steel one is about 40 bucks. This uh, power rock cost me like 20. So a lot less expensive, more compact, just as much utility options are out there that I don't think you need all the flash and you know everything with the, the, the BioLite. I thank the BioLite guys for sending one out for us to play with and we're gonna do a giveaway on it. It might be something that car, car camper or something like that, but it doesn't necessarily wanna to run to their vehicle and turn it on and plug in their, their phone and use something like this to charge your batteries. But as you see, you're gonna burn through a lot of wood to trickle charge basically your electronic device. So I don't think that it's very, uh, very effective or efficient means of a charging device. And as I've said before, designs like this, these stoves aren't necessarily the best for cooking. So now the one cool feature with this is that, you know, if you needed a stove in a, in a closed in more confined space because of the fan, you're gonna produce less smoke. So that is a bonus. That's something that the Emberlet is not going to do. Even though the Emberlet is pretty well ventilated and you have a really good draw of air, you're not gonna have a need for that as much as when you have a fan situation. Now, one bad thing, as you guys have seen, it is kind of difficult to light. Once you get lit, it's easy. I've got a nice hot bed of embers and we'll you know, throw, some, uh, throw something on there real quick and it wouldn't take that long to get a flame. But again, I uh, am just concerned with how much it takes to get this thing started. What's the output you're getting from it? You know, are you getting what you need in regards to your power supply and your consistent temperature for cooking needs? So, I mean, as a stove, for boiling water and stuff like that, not bad. You know, cooking things that are uh, you know, less energy. I think the, the entire system might be a vast improvement, but then we're talking about an even larger setup. Now, it does come with a grill, so that would be pretty cool. But as you guys can see, you know, throw a little bit of more fuel wood in there, we're able to get a flame relatively easy, and that's on low. Turn it back to high, and uh, it'll rock and roll here in a second. We're getting blue flames. So the last part that I'm concerned about with this is when uh, we tear this down, we're putting this part back inside the chamber that is all sooty and nasty and whatnot. So this is gonna get pretty mulled up and pretty nasty fairly quickly. Um, actually, there's already something that was on it that was nasty. Uh, so I don't know how long, long term how that would do it. And also you don't wanna put anything in there when it's hot. So you need some time for this to cool down where something like titanium like this, this cools down relatively quickly. Once you dump the ashes, you get it five minutes and you're good to go. Uh, on the safety, I think, this thing has a very stable platform. We don't have much area that we can't touch. As you guys can see, this thing's been burning for you know, 20, 30 minutes already. Now I wouldn't touch anything on the top there. Of course, that's gonna burn you. But if I needed to move this around or if I graze or bump by this, you know, we're not gonna have as much issues. This is something that you wanna warn, warn your children or anything who are gonna be around it, not to touch things that's hot. 
Um, the other thing that you saw is anything falling out of that if you're, ha if you're burning tall material like this. As you can see, that could be a hazard as well. That's happened to me a couple times here on this test and a couple times when I did the other two burns. So all in all, I think that BioLite is going in a good direction for a product that I can see would fit a very, very specific need. Like I said before, I would like to see, you know, maybe a, a shoot or something in this direction uh, to be able to get uh, more wood in there or maybe even bring this out a little bit, make this a little bit taller so we can drop larger pieces in that way um, and then go into the chamber. Maybe if you add some distance, some height to the chamber, that would help out uh, giving you, you more room to build up those embers. Uh, as of right now, I mean, there's a huge bed of coals in here. And as you guys can see, I can put my hand over there now. It takes a little bit to get uncomfortable. We're getting to that point. It's not, it's not anything that's gonna consistently heat at this temperature to cook anything, maybe pasteurizing some water over a long period of time. But then again, the time issue, you're gonna have to load more fuel wood in there. So I'll leave it with that, guys. If you guys have any, uh, any work yourself with the BioLite, if you like it, love it, hate it, if there's some trade secret that I'm missing, please let me know. I'd love to hear about that. We'll probably do a couple more tests and evaluations on this. We're not technically done yet. Uh, I like to go out and play around with it a little bit more because uh, every time you use something, you learn a little bit more uh, tips and tricks how to utilize it better. But right off the bat, it does have similar flaws I've seen with other systems that I can't uh, look away from. So unfortunately, I don't necessarily have a veil of ignorance with this kind of setup because of other gear that I've tested that is a very similar deployment. All right, guys, Adam from Equipped to Endure. If you have any questions or comments, please email me at adam at equippedtoendure.com. You guys take care, be safe out there, and remember, if you're not always prepared, you're never prepared. Thanks.